A quick quiz question for you. Faced with a rise in radiation above safe levels in the area around a nuclear power plant, what should you do? Should you A. Calmly raise the alarm, find the cause and fix it, B. Change your definition of safe levels and deny anything is wrong? If you answered A, you're one of those boring, sane people. If you answered B, you might just be working for China's National Nuclear Safety Administration. Here's what you need to know. There is an imminent radiological threat at Taishan Nuclear Power Plant in China's Guangdong Province, according to CNN, citing a memo from French company Framatome, which part owns and operates the plant. Documents sent to U.S. officials by the company have also accused China's National Nuclear Safety Administration of raising its own acceptable limits for radiation leaks into the surrounding area to avoid the plant being shut down. In a separate statement, Framatome's parent company, EDF, explained there had been an increase in the concentration of xenon and krypton gases in the primary circuit of reactor number one at Taishan, according to Reuters. These elements have radioactive qualities. According to CNN, EDF described production of these gases as a known phenomenon caused by a degradation of the housing of the fuel rods. They added that this housing is the first of three barriers between the rods and the outside. Taishan is the first plant in the world to operate a next-generation EPR nuclear reactor, a design that has been subject to years of delays elsewhere, according to The Guardian. A 2018 report by Factwire detailed an array of problems at the site. As of May 30th, radiation around Taishan had reached 90% of what was already a revised limit, according to a Framatome memo to the U.S. Department of Energy, cited by CNN. The memo suggested that the Chinese plant operator may now be pushing for China's National Nuclear Safety Administration to further increase the plant's shutdown limit. A statement published on the plant's website, Sunday Night Local Time, said environmental readings for the plant and its surrounding area were normal, according to CNN. What's more, publicly, Framatome has issued a carefully worded statement saying that according to the data available, the plant is operating within the safety parameters. But you don't have to be a nuclear physicist to see that this is dodgy territory. In fact, you don't have to be much of anything for three reasons. Number one, Framatome's warning was sent to the U.S. Department of Energy, asking to be allowed American technical assistance in order to resolve the issue. A message like this is of course not going to go down well with their business partners in China, and so isn't a decision taken lightly. Number two, Framatome's own message described the situation as urgent. The situation is an imminent radiological threat to the site and to the public, and Framatome urgently requests permission to transfer technical data and assistance as may be necessary to return the plant to normal operation. Its memo read, We have to presume that nuclear power plant operators do not just throw around words like imminent and urgent for fun. And number three, most importantly, if you look closely at the plant's claim that the radiation levels are normal, you'll notice that it's potentially meaningless if you're prepared to just change what your definition of normal is. According to the Framatome memo, China's National Nuclear Safety Administration has revised its radiation level limit to more than double its initial figure. And the conclusion from the French operating company to the U.S. Energy Department was, this increases off-site risk to the public and on-site workers. The extent of that risk remains unclear, and according to the BBC, the xenon and krypton were released into the atmosphere deliberately, not by accident. However, the fuel rod issue that caused the buildup of those gases poses questions for the plant, and simply changing safety limits in order to cover that up is a dangerous game to play. Furthermore, it adds to suggestions of a somewhat lax approach to safety at the site, going back to before it opened. According to Factwire, after weaknesses were found in the French-designed reactor vessel heads used at the plant, China's National Nuclear Safety Administration only required the plant to develop a testing method for its own reactor vessel head as soon as possible. We don't know about you, but here at Tomo News, we use the phrase as soon as possible for things like ordering lattes, not for checking if our nuclear reactor is working. What's more, in the months before the plant opened in 2018, the very same National Nuclear Safety Administration published a separate inspection report cited by Factwire, which listed 20 areas in which Taishan could improve. It may well be that some of these are normal teething issues that always occur before any major construction opens, and the report was obviously designed to eliminate them. But once an authority has agreed to double its idea of safe limits on radiation, it's probably not unreasonable to question some of their other decisions too. And of course, we all know why safety matters when it comes to nuclear power. Nuclear power is a complex, multifaceted issue containing strong pros and cons. However, if you're looking to make a case against it, one word does a very good job for you. 
Chernobyl. After the meltdown in 1986, it became a watchword for the dangers of nuclear power. New reports of nuclear reactions discovered smoldering, like embers at a barbecue, in an inaccessible chamber at the site, tell us the legacy of that meltdown is still developing. Here is what you need to know. Scientists have recorded a rise in fission reactions around the destroyed nuclear reactor at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, according to New Scientist. The plant is surrounded by a megastructure called Chernobyl New Safe Confinement, and sensors around the structure have registered increased neutron emissions, according to Reuters. Originally, the Unit 4 reactor at the Chernobyl plant experienced a meltdown in April of 1986, after an unexpected drop in power during a safety test, according to Science Alert. Explosions of compressed steam released as a result of the meltdown sent out radioactive material across Europe, helping lead to the premature deaths of what could be tens of thousands of people. The concern now is that an increase in neutron emissions could create an uncontrolled nuclear fission reaction and further explosions. In nuclear fission, a neutron collides with a uranium atom and splits it, releasing energy and additional neutrons. These neutrons then collide with further uranium atoms in a chain reaction, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration. The increase in neutron emissions may have been caused by changes in rainwater levels since the installation of a new shelter over the site in 2016, according to Reuters, citing scientists at Ukraine's Institute for Safety Problems of Nuclear Power Plants. According to new scientists, the issue may relate to one chamber, known as Subreactor Room 305-2 in particular. Room 305-2 is thought to contain large amounts of radioactive material, and the exact amount of rainwater in the room promotes or reduces the likelihood of fission reactions. Large amounts of water, as there may have been previously, slow neutrons down, preventing them from being captured by other nuclei. Meanwhile, if there's no water at all, neutrons can move too quickly to be easily captured. After the installation of the shelter, it is speculated that there may be just the right amount of water to facilitate reactions, which may explain the increased neutron emissions. Neil Hyatt, nuclear materials chemist at the University of Sheffield, sought to play down the risks of an explosion, telling new scientists, We're talking about very low rates of fission, so it's not like a fizzing nuclear reactor. Our estimation of fizzle material in that room means that we can be fairly confident that you're not going to get such rapid release of nuclear energy that you have an explosion, he said. However, perhaps less reassuringly, he added, but we don't know for sure. It's been 10 years since Japan's 2011 Fukushima nuclear disaster, and Fox News reports that experts say cleaning up the leaking nuclear reactors will take another 30 years and billions of dollars. Officials believe that the work could cost the government much more than $76 billion. This work would focus on removing nuclear fuel and about 900 tons of melted fuel debris, while also disposing of contaminated cooling water and dismantling the four reactors. Japan has already spent $295 billion on the region's recovery. Details about what's happening inside the reactors are largely unknown because it's still too dangerous for humans to go inside, and robots can only provide a partial view of the melted fuel. In 2022, workers plan to test a mechanical arm that will retrieve fuel debris at the bottom of the Unit 2 reactor. 1.24 million tons of contaminated water are circulating through the reactors and will soon fill up the hundreds of giant tanks that hold it. And treatment of this water can only remove certain radioactive elements, but it can't remove the toxic tritium in the water. A massive floating nuclear power plant is now on its way to an Arctic port after Russia's state nuclear corporation Rosatom launched the nuclear plant over the weekend. Russian officials say the academic Lomonosov is set to become the first series of floating nuclear power plants Russia plans to develop. The portable plant is not self-propelled and must be towed to the desired location. It is designed to provide energy to port cities and offshore gas and oil extracting platforms. The floating nuclear power plant will be towed from St. Petersburg and around Norway to a Russian town called Mirmansk to take on nuclear fuel. From Mirmansk, the 232 million US dollar nuclear plant will head to the Arctic to power the oil industry town of Pivik. With two nuclear reactors, the nuclear plant will produce up to 70 megawatts of electricity, enough to power a city of 100,000 inhabitants. Bosa Tom says the nuclear plant is designed with a great margin of safety that exceeds all possible threats and makes nuclear reactors invincible for tsunamis and other natural disasters. Rosatom also added that the floating nuclear plant meets all requirements of the International Atomic Energy Agency and do not pose any threats to the environment. 
Despite such reassurances, Greenpeace nuclear expert John Heverkamp told Engadget that having nuclear reactors moving around the Arctic Ocean creates an obvious threat to a fragile environment which is already affected by climate change. Chernobyl gets a new lease on life. Ukraine has just unveiled a solar power plant just 100 meters from Chernobyl's nuclear site in which a nuclear disaster occurred 30 years ago. According to a Reuters report, the power plant will consist of photovoltaic solar panels to produce energy and will be connected to the power grid. Ukraine plans to diversify its energy sources by using renewable energy such as solar power. About 3,800 panels will be installed and will produce enough energy to power 2,000 apartments. The Chernobyl solar power plant currently has a capacity of 1 megawatt, but there are plans to eventually increase it to 100 megawatts. Chernobyl's nuclear site exploded in 1986 and forced hundreds of thousands of people to evacuate the contaminated area, which resulted in the area being abandoned due to radiation. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.